Welcome to the Ultimate PL300 Exam Masterclass. Are you ready to crack the PL300 exam in one go? You're in the right place. In this session, we'll arm you with powerful insights and hand-picked questions that can make all the difference in your exam performance. We've scanned the web using intelligent crawlers to gather the most critical and high-impact questions, all compiled into one powerful PDF resource. You can download it from the link in the description. Not only will we explore these must-practice questions, but we'll also share real exam experiences and pro tips to give you that competitive edge. Let's dive into the key questions that could shape your success. Question 1. You have a project management app that is fully hosted in Microsoft Teams. The app was developed by using Microsoft Power Apps. You need to create a Power BI report that connects to the project management app. Which connector should you select? A. Microsoft Teams Personal Analytics B. SQL Server Database C. Dataverse D. Data Flows Correct answer is C. Explanation Since Power Apps store data in Dataverse, Using the Dataverse connector gives direct access to the app's backend data. This allows seamless integration with Power BI for reporting. Question 2. For the sales department at your company, you publish a Power BI report that imports data from a Microsoft Excel file located in a Microsoft SharePoint folder. The data model contains several measures. You need to create a Power BI report from the existing data. The solution must minimize development effort. Which type of data source should you use? A. Power BI dataset. B. A SharePoint folder. C. Power BI data flows. D. An Excel workbook. Correct answer is a. Explanation. Using an existing Power BI dataset saves time and effort by reusing already prepared models and measures. This approach promotes consistency and centralized data control. Question 3. You have a Microsoft SharePoint online site that contains several document libraries. One of the document libraries contains manufacturing reports saved as Microsoft Excel files. All the manufacturing reports have the same data structure. You need to use Power BI Desktop to load only the manufacturing reports to a table for analysis. What should you do? A. Get data from a SharePoint folder and enter the site URL select transform, then filter by the folder path to the manufacturing reports library. B. Get data from a SharePoint list and enter the site URL. Select combine and transform, then filter by the folder path to the manufacturing reports library. C. Get data from a SharePoint folder, enter the site URL, and then select combine and load. D. Get data from a SharePoint list, enter the site URL, and then select Combine and Load. Correct answer is a Explanation By using the SharePoint folder connector and filtering, you can target specific reports. This approach ensures only relevant files are imported into Power BI. Question 4 You have a CSV file that contains user complaints. The file contains a column named Logged. Logged contains the date and time each complaint occurred. The data in Logged is in the following format, December 31, 2018 at 8.59. You need to be able to analyze the complaints by the log date and use a built-in date hierarchy. What should you do? A. Apply a transformation to extract the last 11 characters of the logged column and set the data type of the new column to date. B. Change the data type of the logged column to date. C. Split the logged column by using add as the delimiter. D. Apply a transformation to extract the first 11 characters of the logged column. Correct answer is C. Explanation. Splitting the column using the word at gives you separate date and time columns. Then the date column can be used to build a hierarchy for time-based analysis. Question 5. You have a Microsoft Excel file in a Microsoft OneDrive folder. The file must be imported to a Power BI dataset. 
you need to ensure that the dataset can be refreshed in PowerBI.com. Which two connectors can you use to connect to the file? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. A. Excel Workbook B. Text slash CSV C. Folder D. SharePoint Folder E. Web Correct answer is D and E. Explanation Both SharePoint Folder and Web Connectors support cloud-based refreshes. This ensures that your dataset stays up to date in the Power BI service. Question 6. You have an Azure SQL database that contains sales transactions. The database is updated frequently. You need to generate reports from the data to detect fraudulent transactions. The data must be visible within 5 minutes of an update. How should you configure the data connection? A. Add a SQL statement. B. Set the command timeout and minute setting. C. Set data connectivity mode to import. D. Set data connectivity mode to direct query. Correct answer is D. Explanation. Direct query allows real-time access to the data directly from the source. This ensures minimal delay and supports near real-time reporting needs. Question 7. A business intelligence BI developer creates a data flow in Power BI that uses direct query to access tables from an on-premises Microsoft SQL server. The enhanced data flows compute engine is turned on for the data flow. You need to use the data flow in a report. The solution must meet the following requirements. Minimize online processing operations. Minimize calculation times and render times for visuals. Include data from the current year, up to and including the previous day. What should you do? A. Create a data flows connection that has direct query mode selected. B. Create a data flows connection that has direct query mode selected and configure a gateway connection for the dataset. C. Create a data flows connection that has import mode selected and schedule a daily refresh. D. Create a data flows connection that has import mode selected and create a Microsoft Power Automate solution to refresh the data hourly. Correct answer is C. Explanation. Import mode boosts performance by loading data into Power BI memory. A daily refresh captures near current data with faster visuals. Question 8. You attempt to connect Power BI Desktop to a Cassandra database. From the Get Data Connector list, you discover that there is no specific connector for the Cassandra database. You need to select an alternate data connector that will connect to the database. Which type of connector should you choose? A. Microsoft SQL Server Database B. ODBC C. OLDB D. OData Correct answer is B. Explanation ODBC provides a generic and flexible way to connect unsupported databases. It acts as a bridge for many non-native data sources like Cassandra. Question 9. You plan to get data from flat files for a Power BI semantic model. You need to select a location to store the files. Which location requires an on-premises data gateway? A. OneDrive for Business B. Personal OneDrive Account C. SharePoint Online Team Sites D. Shared Folder on a Local Network Correct answer is D. Explanation Local network folders are not accessible to cloud services directly. Hence, an on-premises data gateway is needed for access and refresh. Question 10. You have a Power BI semantic model that gets data from a table in a SQL Server database. From which view in Power BI Desktop can you modify the storage mode of the table? A. Data view B. Model view C. Page view D. Report view Correct answer is B. Explanation Model view gives you access to data source properties and relationships. Here you can change storage mode between import, direct query, or dual. Question 11. 
you plan to publish a semantic model from Power BI Desktop. You need to ensure that a server name can be changed after the semantic model has been published to the Power BI service. Which two actions should you perform? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. A. Create a parameter. B. Create a query for the server name. C. From the data source settings in Power BI Desktop, update the permissions. D. From the data source settings, update the server source to use a parameter. E. Update the source applied step of all related queries to reference the server name query. Correct answer is A and D. Explanation. Using parameters makes the connection string dynamic and editable after publishing. This setup allows easy server name changes without editing queries again. Question 12. You are analyzing query data by using Power Query Editor. You need to ensure that the column statistics are based on an analysis of the entire dataset. What should you do? A. Recreate the storage mode to be direct query. B. From the status bar, change profiling status to entire dataset. C. In Power Query Editor, enable column profiling from the view ribbon. D. Load the data into the data model. Correct answer is B. Explanation. By default, Power Query only profiles the top 1000 rows. Changing the profiling scope ensures stats reflect the complete dataset. Question 13. From Power Query Editor, you attempt to execute a query and receive the following error message. Data source. Error. Could not find file. What are two possible causes of the error? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. A. You do not have permissions to the file. B. An incorrect privacy level was used for the data source. C. The file is locked. D. The reference file was moved to a new location. Correct answer is A and D. Explanation. Missing file access or moved files are common causes of this error. Both cases break the file path reference needed by Power Query. Question 14. You have a Microsoft Power BI desktop report named Report 1 that uses an Azure SQL database as a data source. A user named User1 plans to create a report by using the same data source as Report 1. You need to simplify the connection to the data source for User1. Which type of file should you create? A. Bids B. XLSX C. PBIT D. PBIX Correct answer is a Explanation Bids files are specifically designed to predefine data connections, making it easier for users to connect without manual setup. Question 15 you use Power Query to import two tables named Order Header and Order Details from an Azure SQL database. The Order Header table relates to the Order Details table by using a column named Order ID in each table. You need to combine the tables into a single query that contains the unique columns of each table. What should you select in Power Query Editor? A. Merge Queries B. Combine Files C. Append queries. Correct answer is a explanation. Merge queries joins two tables based on a matching column like order ID. This lets you bring in related columns from both tables into one view. Question 16. You plan to create a Power BI semantic model named Model 1 that will contain data from an Azure SQL database named DB1. Model 1 must show updated data within 2 minutes of the data being updated in DB1. You need to select a connectivity mode for the connection to DB1. What should you choose? A. Direct query. B. Live connection. C. Import. Correct answer is a Explanation. Direct query fetches data live from the source without storing it in Power BI. Ensuring near real-time updates. Question 17. You plan to use Power BI Desktop to create a bug tracking dashboard that will pull data from analytics in Azure DevOps. From Power BI Desktop, 
you need to configure a data connector to authenticate to Azure DevOps. The solution must meet the following requirements. Use analytics views. Filter data from the cloud. Which connector should you use? A. OData queries. B. Azure DevOps boards only. C. Azure DevOps server boards only. D. OData feed. Correct answer is B. Explanation. Azure DevOps Connector supports cloud-based boards and analytics views. It's optimized for direct and secure data connections to Azure DevOps services. Question 18. You import an Excel file into Power BI Desktop and begin to analyze the data in Power Query Editor. You need to identify outliers in a text column within the data source. Which information should you use from Power Query Editor? A. The min and max values in column profile. B. The top and bottom entries in value distribution. C. The value of the distinct entry in column statistics. D. The value of the unique entry in column statistics. Correct answer is B. Explanation. Value distribution visually shows the frequency of each entry. This helps you quickly spot unusual or rare values as outliers. Question 19. Your organization uses Microsoft Power BI to analyze sales data from multiple sources. A report visual displays monthly sales figures grouped by product categories. You need to ensure all product categories appear in the visual, even if they have no sales data for certain months. What should you do? A. Create a calculated column to replace blanks with a default value. B. Enable the option to show items with no data. C. Exclude blank values from the product category field. D. Perform a cross-join between product category and sales tables. Correct answer is B. Explanation. Showing items with no data ensures category labels still appear. This improves report readability and ensures data completeness. Question 20. You have a Microsoft Excel file in a Microsoft OneDrive folder. The file must be imported to a Power BI semantic model. You need to ensure that the semantic model can be refreshed in PowerBI.com. Which two connectors can you use to connect to the file? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. A. Web B. Excel Workbook C. Folder D. Text slash CSV E. SharePoint Folder Correct answer is A and E. Explanation Both Web and SharePoint Folder connectors support Cloud Refresh. They maintain an active link to the hosted file on OneDrive or SharePoint. Check the description for the PDF download link and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for upcoming episodes. Thank you.